<laughs> I will try. I will be speaking very quickly. Hello, everyone, and thank you for uh, coming in here to, to hear us talk about uh, our communities. It's really important, and I know it's really early as well. Uh, another big thank you goes to uh, the RIP community for fostering NOGS, um, to the NCC for supporting us, and especially to Miriam for actually getting us all together and talking about it this week uh, on a few occasions. So my name is Christian Serbu, and uh, I am one of the uh, co-founders and organizers of the Irish Network Operators Group. Um, by day, I am a network architect and a consultant, and by night, I usually worry a lot and write many, many emails. Uh, seriously, the communication part and aspect of NOGs and communities is really, really important. Um, um, so, to talk about um, iNOG, I will start, start first by uh, failing at recursive uh, acronyms. This alternative spelling of INOG actually came out of uh, some discussions that we had this week. Um, and hopefully the rest of the presentation will, will show you why I uh, got to try uh, this new experiment. Um, so this is something else that came out of discussions and it's really good uh, to a point to make um, what works for us might not work for everybody else, might not work for you. Uh, but then we can also learn from each other, and that's, I think, is the important part of what we're doing here. Um, to give you an idea of this uh, process of growth that we've had, uh, we're at about 700 community members currently, um, and our meeting started from five people attending, and now we're at about 90 to 100 at each meeting. So let me tell you then about INOG. The way we started, uh, basically, was with a discussion on Twitter. Um, someone asked the question, is there an OG in Ireland? Can we meet people that work in this industry? After some furious Googling, we didn't really find too much. I will tell you a bit later what we found. Um, so the answer was, why don't we actually get together and try to see if we can start one? And obviously, a question is the best way to answer another question. Um, the person over there you can see with a very subtle arrow pointed at his face is uh, my partner in crime, Donald. He's a great guy. He's the other organizer of INOG and the person which taught me a lot about organizing events and fostering community and without whom none of this actually would have happened, I'm positively sure by now. So what happened is Donald get, got us a couple of hours in a co-working space on a boat, which you see behind. So that is actually an office, or was, I'm not sure if they, if, if do space still have it. We grabbed some beers, some snacks, and then we got together and talked about, hey, can we start this thing? What, what, do, what do we expect from, from an AUG? Um, so this was essentially our first meeting. So we said, okay, this is number one. Then our second meeting came up. We had the initial five people. Um, and then a few others. Uh, I can see a lot of faces there that have been supporters of our community along the years um, and have contributed quite a bit. Um, not pictured is also Barry O'Donovan from INEX, who was actually presenting while I was busy taking a really fuzzy picture of everyone else. Um, as time wore by, um, the number, both of members and the one behind the double column, actually was going up at a dizzying rate. Um, so this was INOC 6, then we got to 9, and then we got to A and B. So basically, we started making counting fun again from 2015, one hex digit at a time. Um, now, story time is uh, partly over. I have a few lessons that we learned along the years that I would like to, to share with you. Um, and basically, you will see, I think, the, the, especially the last part, you will, you will kind of see it as a recurring theme. We like to, to call things out loud and, and make things explicit to people because this basically creates the correct mindset uh, for people from the, from the get-go. Um, our message, as you can find it on inoc.net, on the website, 
um, has three parts that I would like to emphasize uh, today. So the first one is that INOG is a community of people that have an interest in network engineering, um, that practice it or have an interest in network engineering, right? Um, next, uh, we provide edutainment, as, uh, as it's called. Uh, we are focused on providing education and entertainment at the same time um, through the content we have at our meetings. And lastly, um, the part about rebirthing, essentially, um, Ireland had used to have um, a community back, I don't know, something like 10 years ago, and I'm sure Brian can correct me. He, he probably was part of it uh, alongside other members uh, that are in INOG right now. So in 2015, we actually started from scratch and grew to, to what's there today. Um, a quick one. We started from the beginning with a code of conduct. It's very important to have one and to make everyone aware of it. Um, we read it out loud at the beginning of every meeting, and this is, again, part of the Be Explicit mantra. Um, make sure that it applies to both online and offline interactions, because we're, we're not only about um, in-person events. You will have a Slack, an IRC, a mailing list, everything, so the code of conduct should apply everywhere. Um, having a code of conduct is obviously not enough. You should have a few more things. You should know what to do when something happens. You should have trusted contacts and ways of uh, a way of people submitting anonymous feedback. Um, I think you've all been to enough conferences now and you've seen and maybe been in that place. There are people walking around aimlessly. They are sitting in their chair, staring blankly into space, waiting for presentations to start, um, busying themselves with the phone because there's something very important going there. Maybe someone is actually paying attention to you on Twitter or something instead of in real life. I've been there. I've been all of these people at all of the conferences I've gone. Um, so we try to make an effort, and we think it's a really good thing to actually foster the community to integrate these people. So when you see them, go and at least introduce yourself to them. Maybe see what are their interests, why are they here, uh, and maybe use your knowledge of the rest of the community to introduce them to someone or to, a, to another group and get chats going. Um, nothing really beats free. So if you can keep attendance free to your event, do it. Uh, there is nothing like having a really low or no barrier to actually attending the meeting and becoming part of the community. We've seen um, at our events uh, people come that, so students, a lot of students who may not know a lot about network uh, engineering, but maybe they were part of some NetSox or ComSox. Um, they... Um, we had people that were thinking of changing careers. We had um, people bringing their partners who were working in, in some related uh, domains. So it's really important to allow uh, everyone to have access to the event. Um, for example, these guys are, are Lorcan and Tim, and they came on stage in front of 100 people, and they talked about the challenges of running a student network. Um, the link. Down there, I, I, I urge you to actually read it because it, it, it includes two, two very important concepts. Uh, first one is give people explicit permission to uh, make new friends and to, to, to talk to people. And the second one uh, is when standing in a group of people, stand like Pac-Man, which means leave room for someone to join your group. So keep kind of an open circle. Capture and share, I think this is what uh, many people get. And um, putting videos and slides and all possible information on your website for everyone around to, to be able to access is very important. And um, I've had just yesterday someone tell me, you know, I, I live in Germany, right? So I, I can't attend INOX, but I've seen almost 80% of your videos, and they're great. Um, we have two pages um, that are related to proposing a talk and proposing a meeting venue to us. 
I don't have any time to go into details about them, but they are both there to inform people of what are the guidelines and the requirements of such things, uh, but also we've, we've given them as examples to others who are just starting up uh, with, with smaller meetups and so on uh, to use as a basis or, or to get a, give them an idea what's, what's in, it, in this, involved in, in doing this. Um, very quickly, um, INOG meetings are three and a half hours long. They are in the evening after work. So this gives people the, um, the option of just attending after work. We do them now. We, so we started with uh, meetings every uh, two months at the beginning. This pace proved to be kind of unsustainable after a while as we, as we grew, as you can imagine. Uh, but nowadays we, we have a uh, meeting every three months. Um, and I think that's a kind of a good pace. Uh, we rotate between weekdays. Again, this is about inclusion. Some people might have commitments on, on certain weekdays, so we can allow them to actually join us from now and then. Uh, and the venue being easy access accessible means that uh, we try to have venues in the city center that have good links with public transportation and so on. Um, I see Miriam picking up her microphone, so I will, I will, uh, I have only two or three more slides. Um, so visiting new places, we, we go around the, in, in different venues for, from, from companies. Um, this is great because it allows us to bring the community to various workplaces. They get to see those companies' uh, buildings, their, uh, their venue, but also it allows the people working for that company to actually get in touch with our community and to see and, and maybe just out of curiosity pop down to the event and see what's going on. So um, 2018, the things that we are doing this year, we introduced a donation button uh, and the way to give money to, to us as organizers. Um, this allowed us to quickly create a new, to order a new batch of stickers, for example. Um, the button is like this. We added it to, to our website. It's basically you get warm and fuzzy feelings, and that's about it. It's basically just a way to allow us to operate on a budget that is not exactly zero. Um, we also got inspiration from our good friends in NL NOG. Uh, Natalie introduced to us quite a, a number of years before uh, an idea of optional donation tickets. So basically, attendance is free, but if you want to give us some money, then now you have the option to do that. Um, the June double feature, we have INOG 1.0 on a Thursday evening. That's a regular INOG meeting. But then at the weekend, there will be a RIPE hackathon in due space uh, for the whole weekend. Registration is still open for both of them. So if you are able to join us in Dublin, please apply. So to leave you with a parting thought, um, regardless of the format and how your community and your event might look like, we think that all... Um, all NOGs should be open, friendly, and inclusive spaces based on whatever tech interest may be. Uh, they should provide edutainment to their members, and they should always, always put community first. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. That was very um, inspiring. Mm. Thanks. Um, I guess it was a bit of a challenge to squeeze <laughs> five or, or six speakers into one hour plus have a discussion, so we don't really have um, a lot of time left. There's a couple of